5 and 790 News Radio WSGW and online WSGW.com. A partly cloudy good morning to you. I hope your day is going well for you, wherever you might be. Terry Henney here at Radio Center. And right now we're looking at partly sunny skies, looking out the window with 59 degrees here at Radio Center. Also, Midland looking at 57. Downtown Bay City is coming in at 56. So a little bit cooler uh, out and about, especially in central portions of the Lower Peninsula and uh, around, but uh, not necessarily in the uh, thumb area where temperatures are a whole lot more moderate. Matter of fact, uh, some locations in Michigan's thumb closer to uh, the Bay and Lake Huron never really drop below 50 degrees overnight. Currently, we do have 64% humidity, so that's uh, the reason why we did see a little bit of fog out there. North wind at 6, 30.13 and steady is the barometric pressure. And as we go through the day today, we are going to see our temperatures gradually work their way up. We're not going to uh, set the world on fire. Matter of fact, we'll probably finish up about 10 degrees cooler than what's average for this time of the year, which is uh, 75 in the afternoon. We're looking for a high temperature of only about 64, 65. And the reason why is because we are going to be looking at some clouds moving in as we go through the uh, remainder of the day. And there will be that possibility anytime you have the type of cloud that we see in the fall, there's always that chance of seeing a little bit of precipitation dropping out of it, but uh, nothing of any measurable consequence. We did, over the last 24 hours, pick up a little bit of precipitation around over in Michigan's Thumb, uh, the Bad Axe area, Fillion. Uh, they were reporting uh, about two, three-tenths of an inch there. In Saginaw County, here in the immediate Saginaw area, a little bit better than two-tenths out in Frankenmuth, 13 hundredths of an inch. Carroll had a tenth of an inch. Cassidy, not quite a tenth of an inch. Vassar, a little bit more than a tenth of an inch. And we had right around a tenth of an inch the back 40 in uh, Richville. Lexington coming in at 16 hundredths of an inch. Owasso, just barely a trace, about four one hundredths. Then you get a little bit closer into Genesee County. Traces up to just under a tenth of an inch. Lapeer coming in under a tenth of an inch. A little bit further south, uh, you're looking at Ann Arbor, just barely a trace. And then over into and around southeast Michigan, Tecumseh coming in with a quarter of an inch, but everybody else a trace to one one hundredth of an inch. A little bit further north, they did pick up uh, you know, about the same type of precipitation pattern. Traverse City had three-tenths of an inch, but a lot of the locations were looking at less than a tenth. But the big story as far as uh, reporting stations were the temperatures. Uh, obviously, the further north you got, the cooler it was. Uh, Sault Ste. Marie reported 46 for an overnight low. Houghton Lake was looking at uh, 47. Uh, Mount Pleasant uh, was reporting 48. La Pint, La Flint coming in at 44. Bay City had an overnight low at James Clements Airport of 45. Midland 46, Owasso 46, Vassar dropping down to 43 overnight. Gray coming in at 47, Ithaca at 42. West Branch 46, uh, looking at 48 degrees in Sandusky. All of it a function of a high-pressure system, which is over the western part of the Upper Peninsula. That high is going to be hanging around the state of Michigan for the next few days, which is the reason why we are going to be looking at uh, north and a northwest breeze, not only for the remainder of the day today, but also tonight and in through much of the day tomorrow the nice thing about it is very light when it comes to uh, miles per hour. Under 10 miles per hour pretty much for not only the remainder of the day today, but also tonight and tomorrow. Now, tomorrow night, we're going to begin to see a little bit more of a south-southeasterly wind flow. And as a result, 
that is going to spell for tomorrow night and then into the day on Friday, as well as Saturday, and more than likely Sunday, temperatures warming up. Uh, we'll be in the low 70s on Friday and Saturday. Then we'll drop back down into the upper 60s on Sunday. And then in the mid to upper 60s on Monday and Tuesday. But as we work our way into midweek and the second half of the work week next week, we are going to be looking at temperatures pretty close to normal for this time of the year. The average low for this time of the year is 53. The record high in this state is 94. And that was set way back in 1909. The record low, 36, set in 1964. And kind of a side note here, uh, back in 1975, Flint reported a trace of snow on this date. Again, that was 1975, a long time ago, and hopefully it'll be a long time before we see anything like that. Speaking of uh, cooler weather, uh, the coldest ever. September the 13th was set back in 1923. Our uh, high on uh, that date was uh, 51. Hard for me to say. 51 degrees. Our low was 39. That was 100 years ago today. The warmest ever 13th of September was set in 1931. Our high was 93 and our low was 67. A year ago today, 73 was our high, 49 was our low. We had no precipitation to report. Uh, for the month of September, a year ago, we were over an inch and three quarters worth of precipitation, whereas uh, this year so far, the majority of the locations, but more specifically at uh, MBS International Airport, three quarters of an inch is uh, what we were looking at here so far for the first 12 days of the month of September this year. And obviously, some of you uh, are reporting a whole lot more precipitation than that. For the year so far, 27 and three quarters inches of precipitation. That compares to just under 22 inches of precip a year ago at this stage of the game. So obviously, we are a whole lot wetter. Partly cloudy skies as we go through the day. There is going to be that chance of a cloud coming across with a little bit of a light sprinkle. Then tonight, clear skies, 46 degrees, northern Michigan, middle 30s. That's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, and even in southern Michigan and some of the low-lying areas, we are going to see some temperatures in the low 40s and the upper 30s. Just to kind of give you an idea, Ann Arbor overnight was at uh, like 42, so uh, pretty chilly. Tomorrow, sunshine. We're not going to see any of these clouds floating around. 68 is going to be our high temperature for the day tomorrow. 49 in the Great Lakes Bay area tonight. Then 74 on Friday with mostly sunny skies, a low of 50. And then, as we said, moving into the weekend, 72 on Saturday, 69 for a high on Sunday. There is going to be clouds moving in on Saturday night and after midnight there is going to be the chance of some precipitation around, and that'll spill over into at least the morning hours on Sunday. But as we move through the day on Sunday, precipitation patterns are going to be uh, deteriorating, breaking down. And by Sunday night, uh, we're going to be looking at more than likely some clearing skies, 50 for a low on Sunday night. And then still, there will be that chance. It'll be an afternoon chance of some precipitation on Monday, upper 40s for a low on Monday night. And then Tuesday looks like a pretty nice day, partly cloudy skies, 68 for a high. That's a look at the weather as far as what's going on right now. We'll have a whole lot more coming up as we move through the program. We'll talk about all of that in just a moment. But before we get to all of that uh, in the markets, um, and Cody Harris is standing by for that, we want to remind you, the weather forecast brought to you by the folks at Nutrient Ag Solutions. Nutrient Ag Solutions has the local expertise to recommend the corn, soybean, and other seed products that are the best fit for your field. Plus, unparalleled agronomic support with products and services to unlock yield potential and improve crop performance from planting to harvest. 
Ask about our financing options to help you get more from every acre and lead the field. Visit your local Nutrien Ag Solutions branch or go to NutrienAgSolutions.com. They say there's a secret to growing a great crop. At Nutrien Ag Solutions, they beg to differ. It all starts with a strong foundation, and when it comes to fertilizer, there's no question that Titan XE drives dry fertilizer performance. They've been unlocking the potential in every prill of dry fertilizer with BioCatalyst technology for over a decade. Visit lpi.ag slash Titan or contact your Nutrient Ag Solutions crop consultant to drive your crop's potential today. Farm Service brought to you today by the folks at the Michael Sarr Crop Insurance Agency. Risk management is what it's all about, Mr. Farmer. And a lot of you are going to be looking at putting some wheat in, and it might be a very good idea to be in contact with the Michael Sarr Crop Insurance Agency today and discuss some of the options that you've got to get that wheat covered, get it taken care of as we roll through the late fall and over winter and obviously into spring when everything hopefully starts to come together. The Michael Sarr Crop Insurance Agency is licensed to serve all of Michigan with both conventional and organic crop insurance. You can get a hold of their agents directly on their cell for questions or emergencies, or you can call the office. They're located in downtown Reese at 989-868-4722. The Michael Sarr Crop Insurance Agency. Let's find out what's going on as far as our markets are concerned. Cody Harris now from Star of the West joining us. Cody, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today, Terry? Hey, not too bad. Uh, we've seen a few reports come out over the last few days. We've seen some crop progress reports floating around out there. Markets, for the most part, uh, kind of interesting over the last two days. What are we looking at today? Yeah, we're looking at a little bit of a mixed bag here today. seems like wheat's the leader. Uh, beans are kind of getting hit right now. I guess a little bit of bearish news from yesterday's U.S. airport kind of sl making them slide again here this morning. Uh, but you're right. It seems like just right now this market's running on whatever bit of information you can get on both the crop progress report and that WASB report yesterday. So uh, diving into it, looking at it right now, we got cash wheat. That's up 11, 549 on the white, 489 on the red. New crop wheat for 24, that's up 9, 639 on the white, 564 on the red. And cash corn, that's up four at 416. New crop corn is also up four at 416. And then looking at soybeans, cash soybeans are down six at 1265. And new crop soybeans are also down six at 1265. So what were some of these reports telling us, Cody? Well, kind of starting with corn, it seemed like uh, yield production and ending stocks fell a little less than expected or uh, the trade expected. Um, but the but the world corn ending stocks rose by more than expected. I think it was like 3 million metric tons uh, to 314 million metric tons. Um, and that's a hefty 14 and a half million metric tons higher than last year. So that's definitely kind of what put maybe it's a little bit of a bearish tone on corn uh, yesterday. Um, I guess kind of looking at it right now, looking at beans, kind of what happened yesterday. There really was no major surprises on that side of the report. Uh, I think... You know, when we had like a kind of a plunge yesterday in the markets, I think beans were down 23 cents yesterday. But the USDA pegged soy yield at 50.1 bushels an acre. That's only down from 50.9 in the August report. Uh, it's really near expectations. Acres were bumped up by just 100,000 acres. Um, and the final crop was coming in, I think, 4.1 billion bushels compared to 4.2 billion bushels. So there really wasn't much going on in the soybean arena. But I guess a really big bearish reaction uh, maybe attributed to both USDA lowering both crop crush and exports in response to maybe the smaller crop and then the record large world supplies from both South America and the world. So that's kind of what everything's kind of running on here today. All righty. Cody, you have a great day. We'll talk to you again soon, okay? Yep, that sounds good. Appreciate it, Terry. You betcha. A little bit more in depth as far as what the markets are doing. Over to Oppenheimer, we go with Doug Klein. The market report brought to you by Schaefer and Beerline. The new Ram truck inventory is in. So if you're in the market for a new Ram 1500, a Ram heavy duty pickup, ProMaster van, or a Ram commercial truck, and you want to buy with confidence from a dealer that knows what customer satisfaction truly is, now is the time to go to Schaefer and Beerline in Frankenmuth, where family and service sells cars. And by the folks at Thumb Bank, serving the needs of agriculture for well over 100 years. Matter of fact, 125 and counting. 13 locations now 
throughout the Thumb and the Great Lakes Bay region. Thumb Bank, where relationships are built on trust. Morning, Doug. Good morning. Well, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, right? As always. Yeah, I looked it up. $30 million. That's what it takes to be a high net worth individual. Really? Hands there. Well, <laughs> that won't happen in in this neighborhood, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, oh, scratch that off the to-do list. Yeah. So the so CPI, that that, buck, that bucket's got a lid on it, I'll tell you. Yeah, good. Yeah. The CPI came in. Uh, the core was 0.3. They were looking to hope they were hoping to get 0.2 uh, for the month. Um, overall, CPI came in at 0.6. That includes energy and food, especially energy, uh, as we all well know. The uh, the price of crude oil and all that stuff going up this month a lot, uh, dragging that that CPI up. Um, so they're kind of thinking that the Fed might raise interest rates yet one more time this year, uh, but they're still banking on them cutting rates just before the presidential election, probably you know, May or June of next year. So, gee, that kind of goes right in line with our little story that we got going on, you know, for the last year, two, three, whatever. So interesting enough. Uh, Walmart hit a new high today. Amazon hit a new high today. Advanced Auto hit a new low, Dollar General hit a new low, and Ace and Macy's hit a new low today. So kind of shows you the dichotomy between, you know, retail, you, the winners and the losers uh, going on in the world today. So just sort of interesting. So anyway, here are your interesting numbers. The December corn is 479 and three quarters, up three and a quarter. March corn is 494, up three. November soybeans 1340 and three quarters down five and three quarters. Uh, the March soybeans 1366 down four and three quarters. December wheat is 599 up 11 and a half, and March wheat is 625 up 11. Uh, crude oil is 8843 uh, up 27 cents. Heating oil is 333.52 that's up eight cents. Gasoline is 266.63 up a penny. Natural gas, two seventy six and a half, up two cents. Um, over to currencies, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar buys a dollar thirty five twenty seven Canadian. That's down twenty six ticks. The dollar buys one hundred and forty seven point forty seven yen. That's up thirty nine ticks. The euro is at one hundred seven thirty six, down sixteen ticks. And the dollar is at one hundred four seventy three. That's up two ticks. Gold's at nineteen fourteen sixty, down two dollars sixty cents. Silver is 23.18, that is down 22 cents. And platinum's at 902.60, down $10.20. All righty. Mm -hmm. Read them and weep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doug, you take care. Have a good Thanks. one. You too. All righty. Doug Klein over at Oppenheimer. Farm Service brought to you today by the folks at the Freeland Bean and Grain. Planting season just around the corner. Harvest season is here. We're working at it. It's all about soil health. It's all about making sure that that soil will reap the benefits that you really need because you're going to be putting a lot of money into that soil as we go into late fall and, uh, of course, next spring. Well, Freeland Bean and Grain can help. They've got a certified crop advisor there, Vic Huffer. If you've got some questions, you need to do some soil testing, might be a really good idea to get a hold of Vic and uh, discuss the results. Serving you since 1983, Freeland Bean and Grain, where serving you is their business. We say good morning to Jerry Somalski, Bay Landscaping and Garden Center in Essexville. Jerry, we've been talking about lawns. Yes, we have, Jerry, and it is lawn season. So, uh, you know, fertilizing the lawn in the spring is not near as beneficial as now, and wheat killing is much more beneficial now than in the spring. So if you want to catch up on that lawn work and have some time off in the spring, now's the time to do it. So I'd suggest if you're going to fertilize, fertilize now, and you know, about the 15th of September, and then again, the 15th of October. The 15th of October is probably the best fertilizer time of the year. The, right now is about the second best time, and about the third or fourth best time is in the spring when most everybody has to get out and pour that fertilizer down. The grass comes out of dormancy and it's growing like crazy. Why do we want to add more food to it? So we have to keep cutting it more. So right. let's uh, get out there, pump that now, and everything will be great next spring. Fantastic. Jerry, thanks a lot. You take care. Have a good one, okay? 
Yep. Mm-hmm. All righty. Bye-bye. How do you make the most of your land? Shaw does it behind the wheel of the John Deere 1025R compact tractor. Why do I go by Shaw? Shaw stands for skilled hands at work. And he lives up to the name as he uses his versatile tractor to make my yard look as beautiful as I possibly can. But the Hubbards use their 1025R to do both vegetables and my flowers. It's exciting putting yourself out there, learning something new. And with a long list of easy to attach implements, ranging from a front loader to a box blade and backhoe, they both can make the earth take the shape that I wanted to take. There are millions of ways to make the most of your land. How will you make the most of yours? Nothing runs like a deer. Get a one series tractor for just $130 per month at your John Deere dealer today. For additional cost information, please call toll-free 855-633-2315. Contact with a Tri-County Equipment's 11 locations in Auburn Hills, Bad Axe, Birch Run, Burton, Carroll, Fenton, Lapeer, Marlette, Reese, Saginaw, or Sandusky, or visit Tri-County Equipment online at tricountyequipment.com. This note we want to pass along to you, the uh, Soybean Harvest Equipment Field Day that was originally scheduled for tomorrow, the 14th, due to weather concerns has been rescheduled. That event is going to take place on September the 29th. We'll have more details on that. But again, the uh, Soybean Harvest Equipment Field Day that was scheduled for tomorrow has been rescheduled for Friday, September the 29th. This year, Dairyland Seed is introducing our best corn of all time. Again, that sound you just heard, that's the sound of a full lineup of top-performing hybrids bringing the yield like never before. It's the sound of even stronger traits bred specifically to boost corn bushels per acre in your soil. And it's the sound of workhorse corn seed proven to outperform yet again in independent head-to-head trials. See the latest corn performance data at showmethecornyield.com. That's showmethecornyield.com. Are you upset with your current planter performance? Are you considering buying a new planter but blown away from sticker shock? With Precision Planting's V-Set V-Drive and Delta Force, we can retrofit your old planter to outperform any new planter on the market. Then access all your data from planting to harvest easily with Field View. Call PC Ag Solutions today and get your parts ordered, installed, and ready to go for the upcoming growing season. 989-868-4444. PC Ag Solutions. Well, he's on the road today. Chuck Servinsky, Maple Hill Nursery in Midland. Chuck, uh, you're attending a special meeting today. Yeah, we're over in Mount Pleasant, and we're at the Morgan Composting Dairy Do Dealer meeting today. And as far as uh, products coming up, I'm quite sure they not only have a full line of products this year, but they're going to be coming up with some new stuff again next year. Yeah, we're going to find out about that this afternoon, so it's kind of exciting. As far as uh, activities going on, is that uh, fall sale still going on at uh, Maple Hill? It sure is. We've got trees and shrubs and uh, perennials. All in-stock items are 40% off. So right now is a good time to do some shopping, and it's a good time to be fertilizing that land, right? Definitely. The weather we've had has just been really great for fall planting, and you still have got time to get some fertilizer on the lawn as well. All righty. Well, I'll let you get back to your meeting. You take care, drive carefully, and uh, we'll talk to you on Friday, okay? Sounds good. All right. Chuck Servinsky, Maple Hill Nursery in Midland. Your day starts before the sun rises. Once your boots hit the ground, you head out to a field, a barn, or a tractor. As stewards of the land, you know anything worth doing is worth doing right. At Farm Bureau Insurance, we've always believed in and practiced this same philosophy. From heaving bales and weaning calves to spring seeding and fall harvests, it's all about an honest day's work. Knowing your insurance provider is rooted in Michigan offers comfort. At Farm Bureau Insurance, the experience you get with our local trusted advisors is different. From financial security to a helping hand, Farm Bureau understands the experience matters. Find an agent who can protect what matters to you. Find your coverage in Vassar, Millington, and Mayville. Call Denny Miller at 989-823-8493. Well, our fall farm tour continues as we will be attending the downtown Saginaw Farmers Market Harvest Days coming up this Friday. Our broadcast and our farm tour has been brought to you by the folks at the Frank and Muth Credit Union. Back at 1230 with an update. Now we conclude our program with a playing of our national anthem.
From the Premier Kitchen and Bath Gallery Studios, WSGW, Saginaw, Bay City, Midland, WSGW FM, Carlton. This is CBS News on the Hour, presented by Indeed.com. I'm Cammie McCormick, on the run for two weeks in rural southeastern Pennsylvania, an escaped murderer has been caught. Deb Ryan is the district attorney for Chester County. Our nightmare is finally over and the good guys won. Danilo Cavalcante was picked up by thermal imaging from a surveillance plane then captured by teams with search grounds, uh, search dogs on the ground. He had stolen a gun from a local resident earlier in the week. State Police Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens. Yes, he had the firearm with him. Yes, he was a threat. He did not have an opportunity. I believe he was uh, taken by surprise. And I believe the canine played a large role in him not being able to utilize that firearm. He was in jail for killing his ex-girlfriend in 2021. A judge has ruled that former President Donald Trump and his lawyers may only review classified evidence in a secure place as he prepares for a criminal trial over his handling of secret documents. Loyola Law Professor Laurie Levinson. This order makes it very clear that no one from the defense, including the defendant, can make public disclosure of these materials without permission by the court. Trump has argued that he and his lawyers should be able to review the classified information at his Palm Beach, Florida office. A big meeting in Siberia between the leaders of Russia and North Korea, one that could lead to a possible